<laughs> um, yeah, so... Are we it? Yeah, silverfish. <laughs> silverfish and what we've learned and fishing different venues, I think, isn't it? We've gone to, like, big boy venues with depth and wind and angry yeah. stuff. It has. It, this, this year's silverfish campaign started with... We're, we're, I'm not going to say we're midway through because I feel like we're getting towards the end of it. We've only got the accumulation of it, haven't we, with some finals yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, finals. Much. Yeah. But it's been so different to the previous couple of years, hasn't it? Mainly, yeah. as you say, because of venues, hasn't it? Yeah. I definitely feel, I'd, I'd definitely got a bit cocky thinking, yeah, sort of this is dead easy with pellet introductions. It's, it's right when it's calm and on the right venue, but... Venue specific, Deeper yeah. venues. I, yeah, you proper like get scared when you've got tow and wind and stuff to compa- contend with. And yeah. suddenly you feel like dead out your depth again. So it's almost like relearning a few things. It, yeah, it will re- a it's the venues, isn't it? Yeah, relearning how to, it showed the, the massive array of different ways you have to do things depending on the venue, how venues can be different. Yeah, yeah. We've had our eyes opened loads this year. What do you mean, like bait mixes, you mean? All sorts. All, not so much types of mixes, because I think that's personal choices in mm. what ground bait you use and what yeah. you like and all that. But, in, you mean how you feed it and all that sort of thing. The, the biggest eye-opener for me, the first big eye-opener of the year was going to make ins on it. Oh, when yeah, yeah. It's still mild, play, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Honest, we rocked up on... Where were you? Yeah, but you went when it was hot. It was windy as. You couldn't even fish, could you? No, it was all right. It was, no, it was quite windy, but that was... Like watching Matt that, on the next peg, wasn't yeah, you it? Don't oh, it was the day after. Oh. It was the day after we went, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought you were second, weren't you? It was only Matt that beat you. Was you drew the same peg. No, Matt drew my peg. You were to the right, weren't you? No. Nah, well, anyway, anyway, know. anyway, anyway. <laughs> the, the biggest, that was the biggest, oh, right. Yeah. With how different, especially your lake, my lake as well. My, I got absolutely, I got so, ruined on my lake. Me and, me and Matty Dawes both started off like, like we're doing for the skimmers, you know what I mean? Putting a little bit in, waiting for them. Yeah. Now, we, cam's there opposite, like giving it loads of casters and all that, and it was right. Yeah. I think it was, obviously the weather was played a part as well because it's still very mild. It was, but still, it was, loose feed was better for skim yeah, bobs, and definitely. it was 100% skimmers pretty much. Yeah, and casters and as like well. A, you know yeah, what I mean? everything was against how we think it was, and that was the first. No line, there's nothing shallow, just like you had to lose feed to get them into your peg, but everything was on the bottom in like five and a half, six foot. It was yeah. weird. You'd never expect that with that no. species. No, not at all. But it was, it was the first one, and in contradiction on my lake, it was the opposite. I got beat by two lads Did either put a side. A worm in or something like that. Fed loads at start, never loose fed, caught, didn't catch nothing all day, but didn't really catch, and then, especially the, the chapter we write, Emptied it later Fishing on. Fishing you last hour. <laughs> like, wow. Right, okay. But it's just, it just made you realise that you can't get cocky at this game and think, yeah, the way I do things is always right. I heard one then, did you hear that? Oh, I was yeah, down yeah. there. But do you not, there, there's definitely an element of, like, the pellet fishing all seems fairly instant, tick it over, and it's good whilst you're on it. But there's got to be that, or on a lot of venues, there's got to be something you're building for the end. Yes, there's no aggression with pellet fishing, is there? Obviously, it? that's the same way you got done on, on worms and stuff, but going to, like, Holcroft and that, that's very yeah, much the same way. Yeah. You've got to get that last hour right to yeah. actually win the match. You can yeah. tick over and get bites, fishing nice and sexy out long all day, and then get beat by someone who's got that short line right. And the proportion of your weight. a load of bait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. your big fish, that's your bonus fish. But they're and, different venues, aren't they? They're going into what we already knew last year of the bigger venues when the fish aren't necessarily in front of you. Yeah. The little venues that we go to, the pokey, shallow venues, places like Birch House used to be, Riddins. that Sherwood Riddins yeah. on, Match Pool. The main but ones. that's different. I'm going to concentrate that. I'm going to, we're going to come into that in a minute because Riddins is different. It's right when the weights are low and you're catching little skimmers, that's when pellets is right. Yeah. Soon, and the fish are always in front of you. Always in front of you. Whereas you go Hawcroft, them big three pounders that you catch short, they're 10 pegs away at the start of the match. And they're just coming into that field later it's on. It's carp, right? isn't it? They be like carp, they come yeah. into field. They, they might be about, but they're not feeding at the start of the match. And you have to attract them in. You have to, yeah, you have to lay a bed to attract them, and you can't do it with loose feed. Because they're not close Poss- enough yeah, to them yeah, with loose feed. If you put loose yeah. feed, the, you get the wrong fish and all that sort of thing. That's been one for me as well, Jay, like maggots more than casters. Yeah, I'm like. I mean, obviously, that. depending on whether it's roachy or not, but maggots, 100%, it's been better than casters. It does, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'm in the maggot can. I very rarely feed casters now. Mm. The only thing casters benefit for is the accuracy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Or making that bit of noise, waggler, I suppose, you know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, but that's yeah. distance one, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not on a pole. No. Definitely maggots. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think more increased chance of a bonus? 
suppose maggots are better in lots of ways. They probably sink a lot slower as well. Fall a lot slower. Bit more um, light, bit, bit of movement, bit more visible on that side of things. Should we go to that next? No, I want to save the toe bit to last. Yeah. No, let's go on it now. Let's go on that now while we're on the subject of feeding yeah. and slow falling. That's been something as well, like, that with these deeper venues, well, well not necessarily yeah. deeper, wind affected larger, understanding toes become huge, hasn't it? it was, where you put your bait is not where you're going to catch your fish, is it? Yeah, because yeah. I, think, I think we mentioned this last time where I think Jordan kind of sorted my head out on it at Holcroft. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously there, I think coming from sort of carpy mentality, you're always trying to keep your rig still, feed, feed your bait, keep it on the spot. Mm -hmm. And that was just so, so wrong. And it was when chatting to Jord about it where you, he's sometimes catching like a metre, two metres, whatever, down toe of your bait. Yeah. And I think as soon as you got that in your head and you could work out that it wasn't, you didn't need your rig perfectly still to get, yeah. get bites and stuff like that, it changes it. Mm. And it was, where was it, New Year's Day? No, New Year's Eve on that pairs match at Medellin's with, who was it, James Lewis. James Lewis, yeah. And I was on Warren, which is like the shallow one there, which I always draw on. Where were you? Don't tell me numbers, because I wouldn't know what Seven, bank. Seven, like left, left hand bank, sort of halfway down. Yeah, I'm um, with you. So I don't, I don't think it's like a bad area. I think it's just a middle, middle of the road sort of thing. Mm. Um, but that was, proper proper windy like struggling to hold 30 meters at times but because it was so shallow you had like i think three and a half four foot on your long line but you had the wind and the toe going in the same direction i say bastard that bastard does that doesn't it horrible yeah shallow movie because it was like stressing us out at the start because started up trying to do pellet rigs and stuff and you're just like trotting it through and it's just ridiculous and i've ended up it. doing it like a gram rig just being like what can you actually do here? To because I didn't even bring any rods, so I was like, yeah, I'm proper you? you just proper rocked up with, I am a pole fish. That is what <laughs> I will be doing. Dad, Dad had his, uh, Darren Cox next to us had like his three feed of rods, and I'm like, yeah, I've messed up here <laughs> big time. <laughs> but I was like, right, I've got to try and do something because it's a pairs match as well, so I can't really just go home. Um, yeah. But yeah, so like set a grammar up, just seeing like, what can you actually do? How have you do? done that then? Like, just had an Olivet and then a dropper or something? No, or I did, did it with shots, but it was just like, Lots of shot. Down, grabs yeah. with a shot in the <laughs> foot. It must really... have been much line visible in the whole of that rig. <laughs> it looked horrific. And, and I had no number eight, so I had to just shot it with tens. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd, right. I'd, I'd <laughs> it was shot with whatever was on it from before. It just got shortened and compressed it down. It tightened up a bit. But to be fair, it, it did work in a. Like, because it was, must have been first trot through almost. I fed, fed straight out in front on my mark. What marker. did you do? You fish pellets? Um, no. Crush. I fed crushing some micros and some maggots, but. I fish maggots on the hook because I think maggots are always better when I, it's a bit windy. I don't, quick, yeah. Yeah. That was always a Col Coleman's thing. Like, if it's towing and moving, fish maggots, pellets have got to almost be yeah, still. I agree and that's that. just in my head. Yeah. I don't know if it's right. No, I agree with right. that. Um, but yeah, it's like you, you kind of let it go through and it's almost getting to the point. I was like, oh, that's too far. That's too far. And it, it probably was about three meters down, down tow Long where you fed. That, and you start getting bites. And you could tell, like, there was spots and you could throughout the day to change and you just did, did you find though obviously because you're feeding on the same spot did you find though that when you went to the spot where you start getting bite you don't get a bite as quick as if you let it top down to it there was it's a, always been that for me there's a so limit you never get a bite as quick as if you're going straight onto them whereas if you let it come into you can sort of like put it halfway yeah and then get a bite quicker i think it's yeah. almost like I'm mad. It, in my head it was almost like when bagger was on about lifting and dropping where you've got to go high enough to sort of Oh, get their attention. attention. Like, not get their attention, it almost where it's like a fresh bait coming in. Right. Yeah. So it's like gone far enough above them that they've forgot it and it comes down <laughs> and it's a new bait. Because if it, that. it just looks mm. unnatural, if it just yeah. trots down far enough that they've not clocked it, this is what goes on in my head. Yeah, it? they've not clocked it to assume it's unnatural. Yeah. By it doing weird things and going, oh yeah, don't eat that one, boys. That one just did a loop the loop. But yeah, going on that, it was sort of trying to be on it during the day, working out what the toe was doing, where your sort of bite spot was. So I guess it's almost like bloody fish in a river, isn't it? You've got little pockets of fish and yeah. they're going to be at a certain point, yeah, you're going to yeah, feed yeah. at that point. And, but it definitely makes you think about it. Okay then, you lovely lot. So we've got brand new merch in stock for you all. We've got new caps, new hoodies and new t-shirt. Check out the website, it's www.winningways.shop. 
Um, there's the element of not even necessarily being over your bait with silvers and that as well. In that they could be down your peg and past your flipping bait. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sitting yeah, at the back edge right. of it. And yeah. that, that's something we don't do enough of in it. When we were setting little traps with pellets or whatever, for our fishing, commercial fishing, whatever, it is very rarely you've got to fish around your bait too much, mm. isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot of, the, especially with pole fishing, it's accurate, yeah. it's right on it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the silverfish element with depth and tow and big, you have, you've got to think about so flipping much. And then on top of that, finding where the fish are in relation to what your bait's doing and where it could have moved, you have to have different forms of presentation to catch the horrible little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can it, be ready. At the end, it was better on the lighter rig as well. So it's always, yeah. it looked worse going through, but like a 4B14, I think it was in the end. Did you experiment with laying it in, like obviously against the wind so it come back that way, or was it always better to yeah, with kind the of wind? Yeah, with, like, with it letting yeah. it fall in. Because mm. I was like, or well, what was in my head was like, because it's going to be going with the wind, the cur like the curve's going to be that way, isn't it? So you almost go in that way. Yeah. That made no sense to anyone listening. No. Without the hand <laughs> gestures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But the only thing that messed us up was going heavier on the rig. Yeah. Because it had that much lead and weight and everything on it. Or not lead. Might have been lead. It will have been lead if it's number will it been? 10. Um, but I think that ends up catching the tow more. So once it dropped, it felt like it was still towing quite a bit. Yeah, a little sail. And then that on. was a point where the lighter rig went through nicer. Yeah. So it, I think that threw us off for a bit. There was like a bit where I should have been on, on the lighter it, rig. It changes all the time, and it? Yeah. That, that's a big emphasis that has been the learning point, hasn't it? In having, it's always been the case, but it's been highlighted even more this year in the need for different shotting patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, different weights of float, depending on conditions. It's like a new flipping peg, isn't it? Like, unbelievable the difference it can make to rigs. You had it at Cooper's, that was your oh, eye last year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's that uh, tapered, isn't it? Yeah. Tapered shotting. But it's not always... What you think is right isn't always, there's not no. a fix. Same with shallow fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a case of put that rig on, that's fixed it now. No, you catch a few on it instantly, you're like, oh, wow. But then, yeah, yeah. You, you've just got to do what, what the fish are feeding on that day. And at that moment in time, you've got to be sat right on the right rig, haven't you? It does, hasn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? Having, the right species that of fish. becomes more important, because you, you're not, something I'm not liking at all with silvers is multiple lines. I mean, again, these big, deep lakes. It's all right with little yeah. pokey lakes where there's, they're always in front of you, as I said. But the bigger, deeper ones where you've got to bring the fish in or mm. you've got to concentrate them, you want two lines. Yeah. Very rarely, uh, maybe two long ones if they don't want to be short, but more often than not, it's a short and a long, innit? Yeah. The, uh, different venues would be a bit different, but generally it's a short and a long. And it's the having the different rigs that allow you to sit on a line. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. often they don't rock up short to late. No. So no. you've got three, four, flipping four and a half hours of fishing long mm. and the only... Um, fluctuation you can have is obviously you're feeding, but then once you've it's understand how the feeding falling through the water on it, yeah, 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 definitely. It's that it, it, yeah. it just makes there's so much more to a peg, isn't it? Rather than just I fed there, I put that rig there, I catch yeah, fish yeah. like you do with pellets, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hard pellets. That's what you do. No, that's right, mate. Definitely. Because you've been Chester Lakes, haven't you, quite a bit? And yeah. What you were saying on there with like almost having two lines on the two different depths on the same line as well yeah that's almost oh, bringing me that carp fishing into it yeah do you know what I mean that's how i'd treat if i were on snake lake today lovely little snake lake here at cudmore and i was fishing pellet or whatever across i always know the importance in having different depths covered on it whenever there's a shelf you've and always done that haven't you? always yeah. and it is mind-boggling how many fish you can catch mm. in six inches away from your original rig in a different depth it's like a new peg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is no different for silvers. Like chest lakes have been mega for it because you, you shelf there. It's deep water. You've got eight to ten foot average, and you've got it fairly far away, so like nine, ten meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost like a long line, mm. but you can go on the bottom of it and catch a certain species, and you can come this much closer to you, and it'll come up six inches to a foot, and it's like a different peg. I can Imagine literally it. feed one and rest the other. And they're flipping that far apart from each other. So like a foot for, or a foot or so foot. further down. Literally a foot. Well, one will be on a join of my pole, and the next will be halfway down the section. So nothing. Two or three foot. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Because 
normally when you're doing two lines, you want, or in your head, it makes sense to have them as far away from yeah. each other as possible. So yeah. it's almost totally different groups of fish, I suppose. Yeah, but. we look into it too much sometimes. Obviously, when they're really rock bottom, you might need miles apart. But yeah, different species, how they feed different in different areas. So what were you doing, catching roach up the shelf? Right? Yeah, like fishing bottom of the slope and I'm feeding ground bait, bottom of the slope, a little ball of ground bait like that. Oh, I fed one at the start and I'm feeding these every now and again. Got like golf balls. Yeah, when I, when I want to tighten them up, dead sticky golf ball. And then obviously it's pointless putting ground bait on the slope because it's not going to stay there. So you're loose feeding short as you would. So your ground bait's the back of your feed. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm loose feeding on top of the slope and I'm catching roach on that. And then every now and again, I can go to the bottom of the slope, nick a three pounder. It's mad, isn't it? It's just like weird. And you don't catch the roach on the flat bit and you're just going, why aren't you? It's that they far away. They love grazing, don't they? They love being on them slopes, well. They it's always just, have done, haven't they? Yeah. That's why that short line can work really well because generally you're going to be on the slope there it as is. well. So weird. But you can, you can like set, you can just fish your whole day with, or once you rock up, last couple of hours. You can fish your whole session, you probably swap them between two rigs. Mad, isn't it, that? And then you can have different presentations within the two rigs. So you can have a, a bulk and a dropper and then a slow fall on the bottom one. Catch different fish on It's Plumbing horrible. Yeah. I've got more rigs I've got to set up now, haven't I? <laughs> it is. It's, it just shows, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's eye-opening. It really is. Mm -hmm. I bet yeah. there's loads of venues. Do you know what I mean? Meadowlands will be the same. I remember at Meadowlands this year, it was on the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Angling Trust final. Angling Trust. And... They rocked up on my short line late on and it was solid, but it was windy as so I couldn't fish it. It was really windy, wasn't it? I caught a couple of skimmers. We were filming that one. No. No, Stu no. was sat with me. I threw a bomb over it at six metres and it was like that. I remember you like saying that. The actually. amount yeah, yeah. of fish that were in my peg. And because yeah. my rigs are messy, I never even knew there was anything there. I'd get an odd bite, but I threw a bomb at six metres and it's like that. And then went with a three pounder. <laughs> Just, you need different forms of presentation. You can't ever assume that fish aren't there until you've tried everything, lots of different yeah, types yeah. of rigs, isn't it? Yeah. I feel we've waffled a long time on this one. I know, I feel I, I give up too easy sometimes, thinking, no, no, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah. not, nothing else there, but different rigs, as you say, oh. at the right time. It's like resting a peg, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder how many other situations are you can do that. I don't think you can do it in really shallow water, because the fish let They'll you know that they're there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deep but whenever water. you've got depth, and the fish can sort of hide, or you've got a fluctuation of depths yeah. in a close area. Like on your, your maybe your short line for carp, things mm. like that. Or depth, as we've talked about it, far bank on snake lakes. By not covering every possible option, you miss out on all the fish. Yeah, 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 definitely. All, you might miss out on one, but that one might make a difference. Yeah. Mm. It, is, it brings another element into your fishing. But as you say, it means you've got to prep more. Very technical, that, Jay, lad. Very technical. <laughs> like that, though. I like that. I went on one then. That yeah. right woke me up, that it's one. It's good, mate. It's good. Is that it? We're going to finish that one at that. That was quite nice. Yeah. So. I was going to go on to pots and maggots and all that sort of thing. But What's that? We, we covered that. Like, yeah, I'm, to I be fair, no, let's before. do it because that's opened my eyes uh, in the fact that you do need that loose feed element uh, in your fishing for sort of like this time of year. And rather than going straight in with a catapult, you know where near as accurate than you think you are. Mm. But it's that fact that you're putting the bait in through that pot and making something happen. Yeah. You talk about like loads. It's how my match builds these days for silvers. And I've never even thought involved. the silvers for me, you know what I'm like, I've always straight been in, then. loose feed, catapult, always. I've never even entered my head uh, with pots, but you, you brought it home at Cooper's it was when yeah. you started doing it. It's become massive just oh, for mate. kicking your peg off. Yeah, definitely. Even for them, when there's little fish, yeah. it's just accuracy in it. Feed yeah, them with yeah, a yeah. pot instead of a catapult. Because loose feed, is everything in it. Yeah. There's never a day when loose feed is the worst thing. No. Yeah, I'm going to say that. You always want not, something. Not for like now, for silvers and that. Yeah. No, definitely not. To make something happen. Yeah. And by feeding with a pot, I mean F1 e commercial mm. style it keeps them there, doesn't it, instead of there. Yeah. And when there's only four just, in your pack. Do you know, do you ever get like that feeling in fishing though when you feel like oh, it just feels wrong this? Yeah. I get like that I hate when using a pot. fishing for silvers with a pot on. Yeah. That does my head. Is in. it just one that. But that it takes a few extra seconds, it feels really slow. Yeah, but it feels cumbersome it, having a pot on the end of your pole. In you, reality, though, it's... Well, it's, you get if a you're bike cr quicker because yeah, of it. Yeah, as long as it's not a ridiculous fish race, you're getting you your bike quicker. That's what I mean, so. you don't mind it for like that, the little intimate skimmer fishing with the little pellets, but for like everything yeah, for else with maggots in, like, I can't well, do I, it. I don't think it's, it wants to be a constant all day. Cooper's no. it did. yeah, yeah, yeah. But when there's enough fish feet, it's a That's better can... way of building your peg, isn't it? Yeah. Because you oh, get mate. to that point when you know you can get catty out. I did that on here. I took uh, Ian Cotton on here, and it was exactly the same name. Couldn't really catch anything. Put a little pot on, started tapping some maggots in, yeah. and it just like woke the peg up. Makes things happen Ridiculous, quicker. Ridiculous, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper. Yeah, that's been that's my biggest learning thing. What? For no. silvers. 
feeding through a pot to understanding your feed yeah accuracy of your feed and and not not keeping it the same all day like building it yeah to stacking the odds in your favor of making things happen at the right times yeah. that, that is you do notice a lot of like the lads coming from like a naturally silver background they're the ones that will catty all the time mm. like you don't see them using pots that much not never <laughs> but it is like but especially because I have a tendency to use pinkers as well, and when you what, it probably looks more accurate from your point of view. But if you're like side on to someone, catty and pinkers. Oh no! It, it's like catty everywhere. In general. Like no matter how accurate you are, how good your catapult is, it yeah. is a big old area, isn't it? Massive. Yeah. yeah uh, once you go past eleven meters, you cannot keep it a metre square and you're no, a god. especially like wind dictated as well. If you're trying to ping maggots out with wind coming towards you, it's no, not yeah. a chance, is it? Even casters. In it, it's hard to, you know, to maintain constant. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're not putting them in that every go. You think you are, but you're not. I don't think it's something you're ever going to win on them, but it's, it's that instant kick in it, getting fish into your peg, tapping that bait in for silvers. Yeah. yeah, the whole speed thing is like, I think it's more in your head, like swinging fish as well. We've had this conversation so many times. The three or four seconds you save when you actually swing a roach. For every one in ten or whatever it might be, or one in twenty that falls yeah, off, yeah, you lose that whole time in catching yeah, that fish. Yeah, it like at the end of the match, it probably doesn't equate to much difference. If anything, it's probably as quick to net everything. So you're saying it's better to swing, be a swinger? No, not. It's probably not. Yeah, I like that. It's a bit faster. Every time and... I go to swing, I've like rigs up the trees. You've got to commit like to it, haven't you? I told you what Brooks did. Yeah, I submit. I love that. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right, sorry, Jamie. Can't sorry believe you've done that, Dave, and he just went. <laughs> <laughs> Happy now, and fair play. Yeah, <laughs> like really... Netted it, swung it back out into the lake. Swung it back swung out, it in, yeah. Just to prove a point. Was yeah. he on his eights as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. All eights. Yeah, nothing less. That's amazing. Love, love it. it. I love that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then he bashed me up. That's what he does, isn't it? It's yeah. ridiculous. So, so, seeing as last year we were like, pellets were the answer, this year we're kind of changing again. Then you've just got to have your eyes open and you've got yeah. to remember that this commercial fishing Commercial silverfish fishing is a new thing to everyone. Yeah. Isn't it? It's in its, not infancy, but it is. Yeah. And it's not just, oh, the natural anglers are going to be the best at it because they fish for silvers or the commercial lads no. are going to be because they've, it's a whole new thing that we all need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this time next year, it could be totally different again. Yeah, everything will change again. Just yeah. every new venue you go to brings another string to your bow, doesn't it, sort of thing, mm. in the, the way that you see things done. And I'm liking that again. Yeah. It's got me excited about fishing again, right. I think. Yeah. Stopping oh, yeah. it now, it's chucking it down. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Pub. Time to go and hide this. Pub. <laughs> <laughs>